In his presence, which is our theme for this year, it's a call for us to be in the presence of God. And by the way, as much as we are not seeing the presence or seeking the presence, you cannot be in the presence of God empty-handed. You must come in the presence of God carrying a present. Say, tell your neighbor, a present. And that is a sacrifice. When you get born again, one of the things they will tell you to pray and give offering. When you go to many places, many of you go out there. They are present, you carry. And for God, he expected us to be able to worship him. When he delivered the Israelites, he asked them, they were going to the promised land. The Bible says, as they were living, and because they were covenant people, Moses, as he leads the people, they say that we will not even leave behind our animals because the animals were part and parcel on the dwelling in the, of the presence of God. So sacrifices were very critical components of Jewish worship. The word there is critical component. For them, it meant that when you went to the house of God, you carried something. And my friends, it was carrying. It was not like some of us now is an impressor that you are doing actually a virtual giving. You would come with your camel. You would come with your goats. I'm looking forward for two car bulls here. Amen. To not to change to mbuzi, mbuzi not ngombe. Ngombe mbili hapa. A sacrifice will be brought from your store and be brought to the house of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, the Bible enumerates uh, of a story that three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord, your God, at the place he will choose. At the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles, no one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. I want us to pause there and think. The Jews would appear before the Lord three times in a year. Now, you would take time to prepare. I want you to get, if you get this context, you get what I'm preaching. That's why we are talking about the 10th anniversary, and that is not why I'm preaching the sacrifice of worship. There are many of you, even on a Holy Communion Sunday, you don't prepare that you are going to worship the Lord, and therefore you are not ready to sacrifice. Some of you need to wake up in the morning and make your clothes. I actually learned that most times electricity disappears on Sunday. So we have agreed with my wife, we must sacrifice an evening to prepare for Sunday. You go and make your cloth, praise the Lord. You have to prepare and put your Bible somewhere so not you wake up in the morning and look where is my Bible. And you must prepare your offering. Some of us just wake up. So when you look here, there is, my friend, you prepare your offering. They were to prepare to meet the Lord three times in a year. And they were told, please don't come empty handed. Preparation. I'll be sharing something on that. The other story which I see here is when Samuel was dedicating, um, uh, when, um, when uh, Hannah, when, uh, who was this in Hannah chapter 1, was being the boy Samuel was being dedicated to the Lord. The Bible says in Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, you may read, when her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. He prepared and he went with a sacrifice. So worship, worship goes with sacrifice. Are we together? And for many of us, you may deny, we don't preach this always. You must know that where you treasure, you will always offer. You will sacrifice some um, gift in that place. Those who are not my major text. My major text for this morning is 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 14, and 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 7, verse 2 to 7. Before we read them, shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Indeed, Lord, as we go through your word, it means our prayer that help us to know how we need to come to worship you. That indeed, Lord, we will not just come and holy, but we will prepare to come and worship you well. I pray for the word that we are going to read, and Lord, as we be able to reflect on the same, may you bless us as you bless each and every reflection we make. In Jesus' name we pray. 
First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1 to 7, is about David, a man that prepared and assembled the many things for the building of the temple of worship. And there are very many critical things that I've actually learned in this as I was preparing this sermon. But allow me to read so that we don't get lost. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1 to 7, the Bible says, Then David says, The house of the Lord is to be here, and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. You should remember that. On the altar is where they used to offer the sacrifice. So David gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel. Be very careful there because I read this and I read again another text. And I realized that when David actually gathered whatever he gathered, even the foreigners were allowed to be offered the sacrifice. In fact, at one point when some Solomon comes to build, he uses slave dread. <laughs> he uses slaves to build the temple. And they built the temple using the cedars from Lebanon. My friend, Lebanon was not a Christian city. For many of you who think that your offering must be too sacred, my friend, this Bible actually just blew me away. And I saw another tax I've never seen. But David in this place gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel. Like you are a foreigner and you are visiting today, and you want to give the Lord, you would bring the offering to the Lord. And from among them, he appointed stone cutters to prepare dress stone for building the house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fittings, and more bronze than he than could be weighed. You can imagine. That was quite a lot. He also provided more cedar logs than could be counted, for the Sidonians and tyrants had brought large amounts of them to David. First Chronicles, then David said, my son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built must, to, the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence, magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all nations. Take note of that, that when David was gathering the best of the worship material, it was not for his glory. And actually, it was not for Israel. It was for all nations. That is a critical thing that I want to emphasize. Therefore, I will make preparations. Tell your neighbor preparations. So he says, therefore, I will make preparations for it. So David made extensive, now I'll tell you a neighbor, extensive preparations before his death. Now, that is what the Bible talks about. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, my son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord, my God. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. So this man, David, in 1 Samuel chapter 23, 23, he mentioned and he says, I cannot give God that which cannot cost me anything. And he goes ahead and actually writes in 1 Chronicles. For many of you who read the Bibles, by the way, the way the Bible is arranged doesn't mean that Genesis is the oldest book. So some things were actually, people were trying to arrange them. Are we together? So David actually knew what he was doing in 1 Samuel 23, 23. And he knew that worship was going to cost him something. So for many of us who are believers and think that the gospel is free, it's free because Christ paid the price. But we must be partakers of the same in the worship. And thus, we must bring a complete sacrifice. Complete sacrifice looks like insanity because many of us when we come to God we just bring anything when I was growing up I thank God that I have something I need to do I grew up when I was depending on higher education loan board but I saw some of the great men when they were offering and they were growing up how would you see when we were in college somebody giving 1,000 for some of you in college if you see somebody giving 1,000 hey that was something when you were in college I was a treasurer in the high school, and one of my brother, who was my roommate, one day also gave an offering of 1,000. My pocket money was less than a tenth of that. 
Island, there are people who sacrifice. At one day, that brother of mine was called Brian. He came one day and he brought me very good shoes. I said, wow, a student giving me this? He taught me a lot. And I asked the Christian Union, why did you choose a poor man to be the treasurer of the Christian Union? But it was a school of ministry that we may learn in the house of God that you can also sacrifice. He taught me to sacrifice. I'm not there. I'm preaching to myself also. For many of us, as you continue to live, God has expected us to worship him, but not with our mouth only. One as if he were son. I have seen that we must learn to give complete offering. David desired to do that, and he says, I will make preparations. And he does, and he does what we call complete preparations. When the offering was being made, the Abraham, the father of faith, I'll be alluding to him quickly. The Bible says that when they were bringing the offering, the Bible says, bring a blemished lamp. So you would go to your livestock and look at some of your livestock. Unaangalia. Unajua wengine hapa huwa mnakula kuku imekuwa mgonjwa. My wife akichinja ime mimi akichinja ile imekuwa mgonjwa wa sikuli by the way. Anasema kuna kaumbo hapo naandoa kula. Wewe mnaleta shilingi hata kama ni 100 imechomoka kona ndio unasema hii inaenda kwa Mungu. Ni sasa 100 bob. Give the Lord unblemished lamp. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. So they did, and the Bible said, he bring the cedars that could not be counted. They bring the ions that weighed too much. This really blew me out. Who was this man, David? David was a worshiper. So why would actually a worshiper also correlate himself and being a great man that he also was a great sacrifice? Buana Sifiwe San. Mtu mwingine alitoa jokes, hii ilikuwa jokes. Msiyo watu worship msione ni serious. Akasema watu wanajesanga drum set, wanatoa ng offering sangapi. <laughs> that was a joke. A worshiper like David. He had his guitar. But the Bible says he offered to the Lord. But na usimfanye mikono siku engaged mpaka tukusahau. Praise the Lord. This man, David, was a singer. He wrote the Psalms. And so he was a worshiper and a sacrifier. He knew what to do before God. I want you to get that, and you'll get what I'm talking about, sacrifice of worship. David was a man of prayer. Majority of the Psalms that are written are about prayer. So they also say, those who pray a lot, they also say, Lord, I am just praying that I will have money. David prayed, and he sacrificed. Praise the Lord. David was a king. You know, also some of us, like me, I say I'm a senior pastor. I say offering simultaneously to me. You know, petisha uko nyuma. David was a worshiper, and he was a leader. David was a praise person. David forgave Saul. And we know all those kind of things. This man, David, uses the cedars, which are sacrifices. As a great man of God, he knew how to gather, and he brings the cedars from Lebanon to be sacrificed. David sacrificed to God that which cost him something. A man who was a leader, a man who was a worshiper, a man who was this. So there was no exception in David why he would not do that. Be able to sacrifice and do something to God. That was the background about that. So what are our reflections this morning? Because time is going. Our worship is reflected by our sacrifices. That is what I realized in this. That we cannot be worship, worship God, and yet our sacrifices is lame. Maona ule, ata we ukienda kutoa maari. Na ume tunapanya hivi kama hujamaliza mahari pereka ngombe mbili mzuri you treasure your wife even to god one of our preacher came here during last time and he looked and said this does not reflect you by the way most of our leaders when they come to sitam they don't even bother to carry seats they know that sitam 
we'll be able to give them a good place to sit. That's why I'm saying that just in case that day will be a glamorous day that any leader would come. The president never carries seat when they come to sit, and they know these seats can befit them. That's why we are not taking chances. So there is an expectation for you as a child of God, and the world knows. There is an expectation of you, and God knows. But you belittle yourself every day. I talked to you last time when I preached about sacrificing and giving tithes and offering last time, and I said, when God prospers you every day, you also need to increase your offering because your tithe remains at 10%. When will the church grow to the level that actually your offerings exceed your tithe? Because in many cases, we have made the 10% to matter. Rick Warren actually has reversed that thing. Rick Warren actually tithes 90% and keeps 10%. But you cannot be like Rick Warren. And he says that God has given him too much. And then he says that 10% is enough for me because it's a lot of money. I was reading his story on giving and really blew me my mind. That is when the offering goes there. So our worship is reflected by our offering. How we sacrifice our time, our sacrifice, our time, that word should be our time, and money reflects our value to God. This church service is full. When we are doing Holy Communion, in fact, the emblems remain. We were hardly a half. It just tells us how we look at. How many of you get led for appointments? I remember when I was leaving college and I was living in Nakuru. The appointment for interviews was eight. I would leave house at four for an appointment with man. But our appointment with God is so casual. So as I speak about David, a man that was able to sacrifice to God, we also need to ask ourselves, how do we sacrifice our time? When it matters, some of you never get let at workplace because you lose money. But what about this God who's marvelous? So power, he never loses power. But indeed we can walk in any time. And we feel it's okay. It's not okay. We need to check our sacrifice. Our faith is seen in our sacrifices. You can see the faith of man in the sacrifice. The Bible says, and David was a man after God's own heart. And David's temple cannot be even measured to the temple that was built after it was invaded down. For many of you who are in the revival meeting when Reverend Jesse shared here, when that temple was destroyed, and later they rebuild another temple, and they were doing the dedication. The young people were happy and crying and jumping up and down, but the old men were crying. Why were they crying? Because the good temple of gold and silver of magnificence had been brought down. So they were wondering, what kind of this thing that has been brought here? No man was able to sacrifice any better sacrifice than David had done. And so it meant the old men who were the elders and deacons of that time to shed the tears while the men were saying, we have a new temple. They had never seen the magnificence. Old men who are here, I can tell you, I am a pastor. We have poor visitation among our current millennials. Wakienda kuvisit mutu, ata wajiu kubeba maziwa. Maziwa tu. They don't know how to sacrifice. Some of you know, Ukisikia tu golden age wanakuja kunitembelea najua mambo ni sawa. Ukisikia vijana wanakuja ni kuongea na wazee tena. That is why I'm preaching this to you. And this must come clearly. Parents, let's teach our children how to sacrifice if we have not been able to do. Our youth church is not doing well. Ensure that you teach our children how to sacrifice. And when David was when Abraham was going with his son to sacrifice the son asked him, Dad, we are going to worship God. Where is the sacrifice? Are you Bible readers? He didn't know he was the sacrifice. <laughs> this is why some of us are, you might be. The son knew that we must carry something as we go to the house of God. Can your sons remind you that we are going to the house of God? Where is the sacrifice? It means some of us are casual. In the visitation of the house of God, it's like going to the mall. 
It must be, if they pay through pay bill, teach them to sacrifice. Because we're really going to build a magnificent thing. One of the things we are praying that after 10th anniversary, we are going to put here a 6,000 seater intercooler in Sita Meldoret. Amen. 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 But where will be the worshippers be? Where will be the worshippers be? That thing can become a monument in a hundred years if we lose the art and the way of going God to sacrifice. Sacrifice is a way of worship. Hebrews chapter 11 accounts of several men of war who are able to sacrifice to God. One is Abel in chapter, in verse 4, and another one is Abraham. I will look at it later. In Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50, the Bible talks about the lady that sacrificed an alabaster full of oil. And the Bible accords to him, to her, that she was able to do something worth a year's salary. Have you ever sacrificed a costly material blessing to God? This is a challenge to us. Or you've been just coming to God. You need to get at a place. You know, there's one day I used to do this. I was preaching in Meru, and I was beginning ministry. So I had fare for 1,000, and of course, one extra for airtime, 100. So when they were passing the, the offering basket, my pocket went this side, and you know, I, I did like this. I was, it was my fair home. I told God, you have taught me to sacrifice. And uh, it went, anyway, story cut short. I had never given that amount of money. <laughs> I was preaching in a high school. The good thing in high school, they always give you fair. So I prayed, Lord, remember them when I will be leaving. When you sacrifice to God, still God has a way of replenishing your pocket. But I was preaching worried because they had actually sent me that fair to go. So I didn't expect anything. So you can be sure why I was praying so much and said, now should I now seek something here? Sacrifice, costly something. John chapter 3 verse 16 talks about our benevolent God that gave his only begotten son. And he says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So God, in his own way, he knew that to worship goes with sacrifice. Abraham, who is called the father of faith, gave his son as an atonement. Abel sacrificed a better um, a better sacrifice, and the Bible is able to record that. What are the principles of sacrifice of worship? From John chapter 3, verse 16, it begins with God. Uh, you will hear all I'm talking about this place. Sacrifice and worship. When you are not of God, you will struggle. But if you are a man of God, the Bible said, for God so loved the world. And so when you understand God, it, then you will learn to sacrifice. Are we together? One as if you were son. So when God lifts you, and don't count yourself to be, so some of you are big people. This church, my elders, it looks what on Vijana Vijana. We have very good small CEOs here. I can tell you, Elder Wambua, you have now golden age, a week old, in golden age. But one thing they need to know in the God's blessing is to be able to know it begins with God. And so you learn to come with God with us. It flows from our love. So God so loved the world. When you love, you give. My girls, if a man loves you and he never gives you anything, I can tell you, even small things, please start doubting that love. <laughs> I can tell you for free. Where you love, you invest. My friend, I kwenda to Kunyu and to Nakumbuka, Lilianga girlfriend, Wangu Matumbo. I could have bought that time. <laughs> yes, now, yeah, Nakula, Gumambi and Mishiba. It was love, my brother. So it's not a lot of things. I'm not looking at my wife for Matumbo. For many of you know, Matumbo is not a good thing to give. But it could be the only thing you can do out of love. So when you love, you give. And so God loved the world, and he was able to give. 
to us something. It's the love of God. And so the Bible says, for God so loved the world. And so he gave. So the principle is, after you have God, and so you love him, you will always give him. I know many of us struggle so much in giving. I want to tell you, your litmus test is on the second principle. Do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord so much, you will not struggle in this area of giving. By the way, sacrifice can be in two aspects. You can sacrifice as a gift, and you can sacrifice from grace. From gift, you do it as a norm. You do it as a ritual. You do it as an expectation. And that is why we expect you to do the 10%. Out of grace, and that is what Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 to chapter 10, you will be able to do out of love. Unajua kuna watu wanapima, unapima, unapima. Sasa ukipima, you are giving, you are sacrificing as a gift. But you can sacrifice as for grace. Amen? This is what God did. He brings his whole son, the begotten son, he says, die for them. And he doesn't demand anything. By the way, one of the things that I realize about God, when all of us, we expected that at a certain age, uh, 2,000 years as many, God would send his son to come the second time to us. He does not come and say, I will take him back. It was not that conditional because it was out of abundance, love. So don't offer to God and seek revenge. Many times, and this has been very difficult for me and the leadership, when some of you do good things like you've done this podium, it can be misused. Leave to those people and pray for them, they do well. You see your part in it and you want to demand it back. Then it means you didn't give to God. You gave it to the senior pastor. At one point, Elder Agnes, why I'm very careful about gift given to me. One of our pastors was given a gift, and when somebody was not appointed the leadership, he said in the AGM, you know, I gave you. <laughs> pastor reminded him and said, oh, it is still in the desk. Please come for it. When you give to a person out of, please don't go for it. <laughs> I've seen it even some of you out of your love of your wives. When things go right wrong, you say, return this. It's not supposed to be that. You will be selfish. It's not self-centered. God is not asking us, and not there, to sacrifice our sons. He only sent his begotten son. God is actually not demanding to you that you sacrifice, but to love him on what you consider your treasure. When you give and you worship God with your material, it actually removes you from being self-centered. You know, material possession, when they enter your head and you don't share with God, then it means you are taking the glory of God. So that's why you see David is able to do great. And by the way, you can still be rich and yet operating in idolatry. You can still be poor and still operating in the idolatry of material that you can't sacrifice to God. You are telling God you are not part of this. So when David does this, he becomes a man of God. How many of us would trust God with an offering? That plot, one of the things that God would need to change even some of us. There is no offering which is too big to God. You can bring a plot to God. We thank God. The track that will be coming here on 30th, we are going to do a mega outreach, was given by one family. It is worth over more than 24 million. Somebody was saying, one person? It is possible. And some of us can do that. Actually, there is some of us here who can do the 2.2. Yeah, and I'm saying some of us because me and you. Amen. We can do that. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's possible. We can trust God with a car, with gold, with silver, with iron, with many things. For some of us, sacrifice is merely a contribution. We seek to get change to contribute to God. David was giving all of himself to God. The Old Testament, the sacrifice was unblemished lamb. Now you realize my mother there, it was a lamp without defect. It had to be given to God, all of it to God, because it was meant as a worship offering to God. Sacrifices are reflectors of our worship. They are mirror. A great man of God is seen how they worship God. So it's a reflector. If you see the great man 
of God, then you will see the way they worship God with their substances. For many of us, we are merely just getting there. David assembled the all materials needed to build the temple because he valued God and he valued his house. And his house, to mean the house of God, was going to be a house of worship. I must move very fast. Sacrifices are responses of our worship. When we worship God, we are able to depict our posture. Our posture is not when we go humbly. Our worship posture is when our sacrifices reflect that we adore the Lord. For many of us Africans who glory our leaders, my own our Isaac Salimiwa Drive. Soon on Anga. Salute is Napigua to kill us our Atubana. Nino and Awego. They are able to give him the honor. And he parade and he walks. Ah, my goodness. He says, Your honor, Your majesty. What about that majesty, God, that we look at? We come and howl. The dress code in the church, in some churches, try to prescribe. We come and howl. Our offering, we come and howl. Our worship, our sacrifice is our response of worship. You see the way those men sacrifice? You will be actually a the camp of the president and the dignitaries. You must go to gym, not to be fit for yourself, to be fit to run when he needs you to run. How many of us have been able to work on our spiritual muscles? That we will be responsive when he calls. Buana Tsifiwesan. You are improving, you are great to be promoted. How much more does God expect us to sharpen that? That we will be able to improve our spiritual posture when we go before God. What are the tenets of sacrifices of worship? Number one is a bold obedience. Our out of God's love, we obey God boldly. Let me tell you, it's not easy to offer to God. I have told you when I offered 1,000, I don't know whether some of you, one day you wake your pin, you wake 50,000, but I have five. And as you go up, my friend, now I have to you why I reverse you, I have to tell you why I reverse you, I have to tell you why I reverse you, I have to tell you why I reverse you, I have to tell you why I reverse you, I have to tell you why I when we out of love, we obey God. When we obey God, we sacrifice to him. Our tithes, our offering, our things are given to God boldly. You make a bold move to God. God is waiting for you on the other side of obedience. Obedience is not easy, my friend, my friends. It is something that you boldly choose to. I love it. I was away, but I got the report told us that when we are dedicating a child here, so Swans was offering a sacrifice that was so keep it. It is obedient to the word that we tell you, please keep it. It's not that we don't want money. It's boldness of obeying that God, this is not my sacrifice. It belongs to God. It's boldness to obey. Obedience is not just a mere way of us walking out in a, and bowing down. It's bold. Number two is bold actions and habits. For some of us to actually learn to worship, you will learn to put an alarm on Sunday. Boldness to wake up and be able to be in the house of God. David assembled materials enough for the building of the temple. That was bold actions and habits. The Bible says he went to the Lebanon. My friends, you know, you've not read the way the Israelites and the Judah, the Jews used to fight every day. These guys were at war every day. Going to the land of non Jews was actually inviting war. It was bold. But he said, I must build. But imagine, and this is very interesting, that actually the beautiful cedars were not in the house of God. I want you to just imagine. The beautiful money you want is not among these. It is among non believers. My friend. Who will be bold enough to go and bring this man to God and say, I want the cedar for the house of God? I pray today if you are not born again, God is needing your sacrifice. Hallelujah. There is a David preaching in this place. The cedars were in Lebanon. And Lebanon was always at war, even today. Very interesting. The money of the Lord is not with the people of God. 
It is with those people who should be on the Lord. This is very interesting. It needs bold actions. And I will tell you, and God will use it. Amen. Kama ujaokoka unasikia tu hapa ni pesa zinakusumbua lakini injili ijiingie leo. It needs bold words to speak to yourself. That I want to sacrifice to the Lord which cost me something. For some of us as you do this, you could be a young person. Munanisikisa hapa watoto, my children told me they buy me a good card. Where is Melody? Melody waniambia watanulia gari kubwa. You know? These are words of children, and this is what David was speaking every day. That God, I want to offer to you a better sacrifice. Out of those words of prayer, he was able to do that. And he realized that within the vicinity of himself, there were no sinners. There were no workmen. And so he says, I will bring the foreigners to build the temple. He commanded his son Solomon that you do this work. By the way, as Solomon was going to build the temple, I will be looking at that shortly, he came to realize in 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 15 to 18, he realized that actually he needed some slave trade. <laughs> By the way, he washed these curtains on Sunday. But they were able to do this thing. We have sung and prayed to wash these curtains. It took us a whole week. For many of you have been here. I'm telling you that there are men God wants to use for a certain thing in your house, but they are not born again. So David said, we will use these foreigners. And so there was slaves that <laughs> built the temple. Imagine at a temple where Mungu is jengwa na slaves. So if you feel compelled with this, come on to do something. Just do it. We'll also go in the history of building the house of God. The sacrifices were for everyone because it's for worship of God. And all of us belong to God. All of us, without exception. Psalm chapter 24 talks about the earth is the Lord and everything therein. Well, as much as you think you are not of God, when you actually stay on the earth and breathe the air of God, you belong to God. We cannot belong, believe in a marvelous God and ask for less or sacrifice anything anyhow. David charged King Solomon in 1 Kings 5, verse 18 to 18 to bring cedars, the best timbers, the aliens who are foreigners. This was a bold call. It's a prayer with God's work utilizes all resources. The cedars from Lebanon, those they were Gentile nation islands. There was a Gentile labor, build a magnificent temple. We all, and the word is we all. Was to up offering as the Jamana Kanga Bell and you are to offering. Now that the chair kwa papana, the chair be bold. Be like David, gather. Gather even those who are foreigners. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that you will be able to have the resources for the house of God. I want to read 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1 to 5 quickly. Then David said, the house of the Lord God is to be here, and also the altar of the burnt offering. So I've read that, and um, I want to go quickly, I'll go quickly um, to First King. Go to First King. This is where I'm telling you. Read this, and you see the interesting part of God. He says, Solomon had 70,000 carriers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, as well as 3,300 foremen who supervised the project and directed the works. At the king's command, they removed from the quarry large blocks of high-grade stone to provide a foundation of dressed stone for the temple. The craftsmen of Solomon and Hiram and the workers from Babylon cut and prepared the timber and the stone for the building of the temple. It goes on and talks of uh, those people that came from elsewhere. That is where we are having what we call the other things. Two things which I've already mentioned, which God is asking you to sacrifice, is your time. Worship of God. Precious time. And you, Bible talk records of men of God that woke up early in the morning to go and worship God. Time. The length and the quality. Not that. Resources. We have seen men that were able to be stone cutters and do other things. And we have seen David that offered the material blessing. One of the things we treasure as a church, when you see even my elders here wearing a tie, except me and my pastors and my two admin staff, the rest are not paid. God is asking you 
to come and worship him with your skill. Like now I said, I want a master plan. You can just do that as an offering to, to God. You can come and just ask and do one thing here. That is a blessing to God. Are we together? Some of you can even come. Good thing you have. And, and do some of the technical work. We have a technical committee and be able to offer to God as an offering. It is just labor. By the way, it's labor. That is a sacrifice to God. So don't come. My drum people, I know mesema, nimeweka pesa nyingi kucheza. Imagine kuna engineer hapa. Hawa ndio hawa nanikumbusha. Hawa mesoma sana hawa. Bwana asifesa na watu wangu ni wazuri leo nitaanulia chai. Now, this is it. This is it. <laughs> you can give the Lord your time. Even that advice. You know, one of the things I have people here called advisory, they give me very great ideas. And this church grows. And by the way, I'm not preaching this because you are a shortfall. It is Sitam Eldoret, which is on course of our expected income. Clap for yourself. <laughs> we are on course of what we call expected income. And it's because you guys understand what, but I want you to continue and go higher. Hmm? I get men as sacrifices. Yesterday, my elders said, how can we be participators in this? It was not. Me, I just prepared my sermon. And Elder Philip, we can. We want to be up, come at David. And I say, he will gather. <laughs> and that is good. Let's appreciate Elder Philip. <laughs> Amen. I'm finishing. As a church, we believe in faith giving of our tithe, in faithful giving of our tithes and offering for the furtherance of the kingdom. Other material offerings which some of you must learn to give. Slab offering, when God blesses you, okay? Thanksgiving offering. Designated offering. Designated offering is when you choose like we did the gate. You choose now the DVBS. We are doing the 10th anniversary. There is some little money I had budgeted for that thing, but it's an eyes in the drop. Elder Philip is saying, we must do one service to God. It just blows me off because what I had budgeted, I cannot tell you. You will laugh at me. We just need to be David and men of faith and do a designated offering or ask prior to God to give us through an alternative source. We also believe in the diverse utilization of talent and gifts. This church has everyone. I have walked in town, like, meet people in law, this place. And that is a gift that God has given us. So don't fear to use your talent. If you think you have something that we cannot use, just come and ask us, okay? You may think that maybe we don't need your skill. We will actually accept, and, but don't dread your gifts. The word there, don't dread your gift. Give them as an offering to God. The final introduction, which is the conclusion, is that salvation is by grace alone. However, worship without sacrifice paints a picture of a faithless Christian or Christians. God is calling us to sacrifice so that we may further his kingdom. God accepts all resources that are sacrificed by the worshiper who want to be like Abraham. Abraham is talked of a man of faith because he gave an offering. Abel gave a better offering than Cain. Lady with the alabaster full of oil, the men of faith that actually sacrifice out of the deepest of the heart is what God is looking to and up to. Every day when we plan to go to worship, plan your sacrifice. Ask yourself, what is my sacrifice to God? Plan. Atakama niyo hundred bob. Plan. Yusikuja tu nikama sasa offering inakuja. And I realize many of us during COVID, during COVID we didn't collect offering. Unawana hatu wakiwatch online, yyo namba hatu wakipitisha hapa kwa paybill, inaenda tu. Which means Christians don't plan to offer anything. Hii ka offering basket kuna kitu inakumbusha. Please, I'm teaching you this, that as you plan to dress well, to be on time, plan your offering to God. I'll be teaching the CBF that they need also to budget for your offering. So that as you budget for your food, African, we don't. But it's good to do that for the kingdom of God. So that you know what is enough. When David talked about, he brought what was enough for the kingdom of God. I want to pray. Let's bow our head down. Think about how we have been sacrificing to God. There are three things that I would want you to reflect. Our sacrifices reflect our priorities. Our sacrifices reflect our perspectives, our sacrifices reflect our passion. How has these three things been reflected in your life? When you go to God, do you look God as just a senior pastor? 
Do you just look at Satan as, I'm giving to that rich church, or are you looking at the marvelous God that is calling you to sacrifice? Do you look forward to see God being able to father the kingdom through your sacrifice, or do you just think it's just a drop that is done to accomplish anything? Just pray for yourself and ask God to help you in Jesus' name, that you'll be able to sacrifice to God that which costs you something. And you will learn the key principle of sacrifice, which is to know that it flows from understanding who God is. When you know him, by the way, you will never be disturbed with the amount. You will come before God and you say, I can be able to sacrifice my time and I will not demand anything. That I can go before him and not put any condition and I will sacrifice irrespective whether I get a commendation or not. But now, the critical hindrance is when you don't know him. When you don't know him. There are many of us God is willing to use. And only hindrance is maybe you think, when I go to the house, they will abuse my gift. They will not be able to give. So you have kept away from being to the kingdom of God. Or you are there, but the only struggle you have been, you have not surrendered yourself to God. You are feeling that God can use you, but you are struggling. You are struggling with some few things that put you down. Most cases, you are sad. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. You are just on your own island. You are alive or as you wanted to be in the kingdom, but you've not been there. Just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you in Jesus' name. God is willing that you be the sacrifice. David Abraham walks with the son, and the son says, where is the sacrifice? You are the sacrifice. I may be talking about the material that was to be put on the altar, but the sacrifice is somebody in this house. You want to be the sacrifice that God would use, materially or your talent, or else your gift. Just lift up your hand, I pray with you shortly, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We honor your name because of who you are and the things you've done to us and what you continue to do. Just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you in Jesus' name. We want to pray with you in Jesus' name. You could be even a young person, but you want to be like David. David, when he was doing this and speaking these bold words, he wasn't even having the things that he wanted to offer. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Any other hand, please? Thank you, those who are. Thank you. Thank you. Just stand on your feet, even the young children. God is... When I grew up at one time during the post-election violence, when I thought of serving God, I had nothing. Just stand on your feet. I want to trust God for you in Jesus' name. You could also want to give yourself, yourself or your material in Jesus. Just stand in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Father, we honor your name. We give you praise and we give you honor. Just say this prayer. Father, thank you. I honor you. I invite in my heart that you may use me. You may use my talent. Read of any selfish ambition in me, or where's where I put myself rather than putting you, and help me to be used of you for your power and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray.